Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at that upcoming cooldown for the eastern United States, which still hasn't fully set in, and we're also going to take a look at that ongoing heat wave out west. Now, before I dive right into the video, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Those two things help out so much. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you expect a pattern flip to happen that's going to flip us out of this current pattern? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Anyways, let's get straight into the video, and first things first, we need to talk about that severe weather that took place yesterday. We had 160 wind reports. This is as of... 6 a.m. this morning, this is how many we had, and many of those didn't even happen in Wisconsin and Illinois and Michigan. They happened throughout the Mid-Atlantic and the Southeast. Uh, however, I would estimate that there was around 100 there for Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, and Indiana, the area that had that uh, very bad windstorm. We did a live stream last night talking briefly about what was upcoming, but I wasn't able to live stream the entire event, unfortunately, but hopefully there was some helpful information there uh, in that live stream if you were able to catch it. Now let's get straight into the temperatures. I want to show you guys this is how the month of June went. We're just going to recap the whole summer so far. Very hot out west already. The upper Midwest was very hot. Even the northeast was very warm. Uh, but we did see some cooler temperatures there for a lot of the southeast states, the Gulf states, and some of the south central states as well. Here's the month of July. And as you can see, we mostly just expanded on that pattern we were already in. It got hotter out west. Uh, the upper Midwest kind of cooled down a little bit in that Cooler air down there for the South Central, the Gulf States, and the Southeast basically just pushed further north and expanded and actually became more potent as well. Uh, but we saw a very similar pattern. We're at July 28th here by this point, so we can see for the most part what that pattern is overall going to look like for the entire month. I just found it was pretty interesting that we've been in a very warm pattern out west the entire summer so far uh, in a cooler temperature pattern for the Southeast and Gulf States the entire summer so far as well. We're going to actually hop into the teleconnections first in this video because I feel like it's going to be helpful to do so. So here's our Arctic Oscillation in a negative phase. It allows colder air to make its way down to the United States. And in a positive phase, it basically holds a lot of that colder air up way, way, way far north up in northern Canada. As you can see, we've been in a negative phase and we're going to continue to be in one until about Monday, Tuesday time frame where we pop towards a little bit of a neutral one. And then we head back negative again and then possibly back towards a neutral there around, let's see, that's going to be around the 10th or 11th of the month of August there. So it's going to be kind of close to neutral the entire time. The NAO encourages colder air in the eastern United States in a negative phase and warmer air in the eastern United States in a positive phase. We're going to be in a negative phase until about Tuesday. And then we're going to be in kind of a positive phase for a bit. And then it heads right towards neutral. So both of these teleconnections we've shown so far are mostly hovering around normal. Let's take a look at one that has been extreme. Now here's our PNA, Pacific North American Oscillation. In a very positive phase, we see warmer temperatures out west, and as you can see, we're expected to stay in that positive phase for quite a while, at least until Friday, the 6th of August, and that does encourage that very hot temperatures out west. But in a negative phase, it encourages colder air out west, and as you can see, we are expected to go negative around the 7th through the 10th or maybe 11th of August there. And that could be the time frame where we finally see this pattern break up. So we're going to take a look at the surface maps, the temperature anomaly maps in just a moment. Now here we are finally taking a look at some temperature anomalies. And we're going to start out, this is just today from the time I'm making this video. You can tell that there are some very hot temperatures out west, California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, all of these regions are dealing with far above normal temperatures. The darker reds are indicating temperatures of about 10 to 15 degrees above normal, and there's even some brown slash gray shades in there as well. Those are temperatures that are 15 degrees or more above average, which is obviously a significant departure from what is typical. Now let's just take this and take a look at all the way to Friday. This is going to be Friday, July 30th. As you can see, the, the west stays very hot. We see some colder temperatures arrive there for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast. The Southeast is actually holding on to some warmer than normal temperatures a little bit there. But by the time we move on towards Saturday, July 31st, you can see that this is actually getting pushed back by the colder air. So this temperature flip is about to happen actually very, very shortly. We're going to see cold temperatures move in. The warm temperatures are going to move out. 
Look out west quickly with me. Uh, as we look towards the northwest especially, we see temperatures that are about 15 to 20 degrees above normal for Washington, Oregon, and Idaho as well. Very far above normal temperatures, bringing a heat wave still out there for the western United States. These green areas you can see, one there for South Dakota, one for Illinois, and then one there for New York and New England. Those are temperatures that are 10 to 15 degrees below normal. So we're seeing two extremes here in the United States, a very significant departure from what is typical in either direction there. Super interesting pattern we find ourselves in. Uh, very, very interesting to say the least. Now, let's go ahead and take this towards Sunday, August 1st. As you can see, the eastern United States is definitely seeing a big cool down. Uh, the western United States is still holding on to some of that heat, although there is some colder temperatures around, but most of the cold is actually located in the east. We do see that those Gulf states and some of the southeast states are holding on to some warmer temperatures, so they're trying to fight back, but that isn't going to last long. A little bit of a spoiler alert there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards Monday, August 2nd, and beyond in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at August 2nd. That's going to be a Monday. And as you can see, we have far below normal temperatures located in the central United States for the green regions. Colorado, New Mexico, Texas. We see a little bit of Missouri and Illinois in there as well, as well as South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. We see these green showing up again 10 to 15 degrees below normal temperatures located over the central and eastern United States. By the time we reach August 3rd, that's going to be a Tuesday, we see those warmer than normal conditions are still set up over the western United States, and the colder than normal conditions are still just basically taking over the eastern United States. By the time we reach Wednesday, August 4th, it is the same story. This pattern has really just stuck around with us. We see the warmer than normal conditions out west aren't as potent by this point, but they are just as widespread. So it's going to be interesting to see if this is kind of the breaking point for this or if it's going to stick around. But overall, the eastern half of the country is below normal, even maybe the eastern two-thirds, in my opinion. By the time I reach Thursday, August 5th, you can see that we do still have those warmer-than-normal conditions out west, but they are even less potent by this point. You can also tell, if you're really observant, that the eastern half of the country is a little bit less below normal, especially on the northern side. It looks like some warmer-than-normal temperatures are moving in, which is odd. As we can see, by the time of reaching Friday, August 6th, that basically it's half and half by this point. The warm temperatures are halfway over the eastern United States and halfway over the western United States. I would say they're a little bit more over the west, but still a little bit of that spreading around going on. Uh, and this is right around when that PNA, remember the Pacific North American Oscillation, is supposed to flip towards its negative phase, which potentially brings colder than normal conditions in the west and warmer than normal conditions in the east, which would be a complete pattern flip. Now let's go ahead and take this towards Saturday, August 7th. And as you can see, we do see some colder than normal conditions moving on to the West Coast for Washington, Oregon, and California as well. And we do see those warmer than normal conditions still spreading to the eastern United States. So we're going to need to just continue to watch this situation as it unfolds and see if that pattern flip really does occur. Obviously, we're pretty far out by this point. That was day 9 through 10. So that is obviously pretty far out, 240 hours approximately, which is going to be a pretty long shot to see perfect accuracy. So we're just going to continue to track this situation over the coming days as more information unfolds. I expect to at least make one more video about this, especially if a pattern flip is upcoming. I will definitely be bringing a video about that for you guys. Also, another winter forecast is probably needed over the next week or so. So be on the lookout for that one, guys. With that being said, for our confidence tab today, we're at a 4 out of 6. Now, we would be at a 5 or a 6 if we were talking about something much shorter range, but obviously, as we're talking about days 8, 9, 10, we need to lower that confidence a little bit. That's why we're at a 4 out of 6. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lola Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Dennett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary's, John Quilisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen today, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite as well for supporting the channel. This can be found next to that subscribe button down below if you are interested in joining our channel membership. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.